So you may have just picked up your M3 MacBook Air and you might be trying to figure out exactly how you can use this particular MacBook. Now luckily for you, this is a pretty basic MacBook to use. There's not anything super crazy going on with it. And there's so much capability behind this type of MacBook. And I will tell you, you made a really good choice. They're very solid machines. So let's give you a quick breakdown on exactly how to use it. First of all, at the very top, you don't really have much except for the Apple logo right here. It doesn't glow. And this is a matte texture, so it feels very, very nice. I've always loved the way these MacBooks felt, and this one is no exception. At the very corner, like if you're looking at the Apple logo, there's not really anything here. You just have your basic type of, you know, the mechanism that allows you to close it and open it, which is great. On the left side of this MacBook, depending on how you're looking at it, you do have your headphone jack right there, which is pretty cool. I like having a headphone jack on my particular MacBooks, and you are getting that on this side of the device, which is really nice. On the front side, nothing else super crazy, just a little notch or notch that allows you to kind of open it and close it, which it gives you quick access. It's super cool, and I love this thing because you can open it with one hand. And on the right side, you are getting your two USB Type-C ports and a MagSafe port as well. This MagSafe port allows you to kind of charge up your MacBook. You can charge it either way you want to, but it is nice to have a dedicated charging port because it'll freeze up another two USB Type-C ports, which you can kind of use. If you want to go and plug in some other things, if you want to use some other accessories, you can always do that. On the bottom of this MacBook, you're essentially getting your four little like little imprints right here. So you can go and just have these things kind of just laying around. And you can kind of use your MacBook as you normally would, which is genuinely a very, very cool thing. So that kind of covers that on the outside. There really isn't anything super crazy. Now opening this MacBook up, like I said, you can open it up with one hand. This is when you start seeing the keyboard underneath and the trackpad. So there's a few things going on here. So for one, with this particular keyboard, it's a full keyboard. It looks and feels very good. I've always loved the way this keyboard feels. You have your standard function keys at the top with your little like brightness toggles and everything. Your numeric keypad right here, so at the very top right here. Then you have your QWERTY keyboard, you have your tab, shift, all this stuff. You have your trackpad at the very bottom too. Now this is a multi-gesture trackpad. If you've never used one before, just imagine you're kind of moving around your mouse with your finger. And you can go ahead and get access to other portions as well, like if you want to get your... Uh, all applications you can go like here. You can customize the gestures whichever way you want to, which is nice. And you have your arrow keys right here too. And then you have your front display of your MacBook. Now, Mac OS in general is one of my most favorite software features of all time. It is definitely one of my favorite operating systems and it's so clean and minimalistic. It's definitely one of my most favorite softwares out there. Now, at the very top of your particular MacBook Air, you do have this notch up top, which is pretty nice. Again, notches, I mean, all MacBooks have it nowadays, but and it kind of distinguishes our MacBooks between other PCs. But it is nice to have a notch. You have your front-facing camera right up there as well. You have your Touch ID sensor as your keyboard at the very top right up right up there. Then you have your 13 or 15-inch display. So depending on which MacBook you have, the M3 models, you either have the bigger display or the smaller displays, but they work exactly the same way. Now, at the very top of Mac OS, you can kind of see we have our status bar. So this status bar stays consistent unless you're in a actual like some sort of like full screen application. So if you go and take a look at it, so if you can take a look at it right here, you can see we have our Apple key, our Finder key, our you know help button and stuff. This changes when you're in an application. And on the right side, you can also kind of see the same thing. We have different toggles. So on the right side, we basically have our battery icon. We can change. We can change all these. We have our Wi-Fi icon, our Find My or our Find I icon if we want to find something our little control center. So if you want to get quick access to other areas of your particular MacBook, so your Bluetooth, AirDrop, focus modes, sound, lots and lots of other things, you can see those options right here too, which is really nice. Then you have your date and time. So you can tap on date and time. You can get access to a lot of different toggles and so much other stuff. There's endless amounts of things you can basically do on these types of MacBooks, which is super nice. So you can just get access to that and kind of change these things around as you normally would. Hopping out of here, you get access back into your standard display. Now, as always, you have your main display right here. There's nothing super crazy going on with this one. It's as you probably would have expected. It's just a normal standard display. You can go ahead and basically access new folders. If you just click on the double trackpad, then you just go and click a new folder or whatever. You get access to your desktop, you know, icons and folders and stuff here. At the very bottom, you have your dock. Now, this dock is kind of changeable and customizable. You can change the size and so many other things across the board, which is genuinely very cool. Now, what you can do is you can go and click into Finder, and you can go and you know change your icons, you can change your folder icons, so many other things across the board. So this is your folder icon. This is where you can go ahead and change up and you know create new icons and so many other things too. So you do have that that so you do have that type of capability here. Also have your applications folder, so you can go and see all the apps that are currently on your particular MacBook. 
and you can kind of customize it further whichever way you want to. You have Launchpad, your Safari browser, which is your dedicated browser on your MacBook. You can go and use this as well, which is another big thing. Messages, photos, mail, so many other apps across the board. So I would recommend going through and kind of getting used to this dock and kind of changing around and kind of, you know, if you want to remove an icon, you can always just double tap on it like this or just like click on it like this on your trackpad. And you can go and click options and you can just remove from your dock. So you can click remove from dock. So that is an option. But keep in mind, as you get into these applications, the top left corner of your particular device will go and change up too. So your you know, particular Apple logo will stay consistent, but everything else can change per application. So just kind of get used to these things changing right there. This is another thing you can try doing as well. Now at the very end of your dock, you do have two applications I'd recommend getting used to as well. Your App Store. So your App Store will allow you to go ahead and download different types of applications and things within your MacBook. So you can go through and get used to basically just going through and you know downloading applications through your MacBook. So you can download them from Safari, like if you have a DMG file, you can download them here. But beyond that, if you don't want to do it that way, you can always install actual applications from your device within this panel right here. And you can just kind of go through and just kind of search for apps and all these other things. That's another option you do have as well. Exiting out of this one, you can also get into your system settings right up here. And you can get access to all your system settings. So if you ever have any issues with your Apple ID or whatever, you can always search for them or you can always, you know, just log into your Apple ID section here and kind of go on further from there. Your Bluetooth options and Wi-Fi options, you can kind of move around a little bit more here as well. Under notifications, if you want to change up any notification panel settings, you can also do that right here. I guess it's a little bit too bright for you, but you can also do that right there too. Under sound, so you can change your sound options, focus mode, screen time. Lots and lots of different crazy things here you can kind of maneuver around. Now, your general option is a big thing I'd recommend getting used to. So I'd recommend doing is going into your general settings, which is right here, clicking on software update, and pretty much getting used to updating your MacBook as often as possible. The last thing you want to do is to have a very, very outdated version of you know, Mac OS on your particular device. And that can't end up happening if you get a device like this. So you want to make sure you get in the habit of updating it as often as you can. Because like I said, the last thing you want to do is update your is like never updating your MacBook, because that can be kind of a problem for some people out there. So try getting in the habit of updating your MacBook as often as you can. Under appearance, you can also go through and you know change your particular MacBook from light mode to dark mode to auto to a lot of different things you can do as well. So you have that type of option here too, which is genuinely very cool. Under accessibility, you can go ahead and change your accessibility section. Under display, I'd probably recommend going through if there's a little like auto brightness toggle, just going ahead and kind of removing that. It doesn't look like there's one here, but adaptive brightness, whatever. There is an option you might just want to remove it. And then all of these other options here too. So I'd recommend just going through your particular section here and just kind of getting used to this particular panel and basically going through. So here automatically just brightness. I'm going to turn this off because it keeps messing with it. But you can go and kind of change up whatever you want to on your MacBook. These things have really good displays and really good options and features for you to kind of change around. So just get used to it. And even at the bottom here, they have keyboard and trackpad settings too. My, key, my trackpad is the big thing I end up changing a lot. So I'd recommend going through here and changing up your trackpad settings because that can give you a lot of other capability too. Now, that's how to use your MacBook at a very, very high level. Obviously, there's lots and lots of different features and you know things that are within a MacBook that you may not be able to utilize or that I didn't showcase in this video. But keep in mind, as you kind of use your MacBook and kind of go on further, you're going to get used to kind of using your MacBook for the most part. So the best way to go through, you know, become a master of your Mac is by going through and actually using it on an everyday basis. So just jump right in. You're going to be perfectly fine. And I think you've made a really good purchase by buying one of these MacBooks. So. That pretty much covers it up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.